Holy moly. Hey everybody, Rob Nelson. This is how LUTs work. Okay, say you have a video that looks like this. It's pretty flat. This is how it comes out of the camera. And then you put a LUT on it and it does this. Pretty cool, huh? Today, we're gonna talk about three ways that you can create and save your own LUTs. And then we're gonna show you how to take somebody else's LUTs, like the ones I'm gonna give you at the end of this video, install them and improve your workflow. All right, now before we get started, I would say the time allotment for this tutorial is going to be about an hour for you to start figuring out how to work with these LUTs. And as far as costs go, it's free unless you don't have the Adobe Suite. You kind of need that first. You can also do the free trial, so it is kind of free, but not at the same time. Okay, let's get started. Now, when I went to film school, I don't remember ever learning about LUTs. This is something that probably has been around for a long time. I just didn't really use it a lot because I didn't use film or I didn't process things that didn't already look pretty good. But a lot of these new cameras, they shoot pretty flat. They have a high dynamic range, but you have to add some color grading to it afterwards for it to look any good. So a LUT is called a lookup table table. Essentially, it's a grade, color grade, that you put onto that footage and it allows you then to have a starting place to go when you're processing the rest of your footage. Now, there's lots of different preset lookup tables in Adobe Premiere. It's also something that you can create on your own, no matter what the look is that you're trying to do, and you can apply to all of your footage. So think of it a lot like a Lightroom preset where you can start getting a particular look to your photographs. This is what you would use for video. Okay, let's just really quickly get started. I have three different ways to do it. The first way is the simplest. It's in Adobe Premiere. So let's open up Adobe Premiere. I have three clips that you can see right here. I'll just play them through. All of these are shot very flat. They're shot with Jonas's Sony camera. We shot these when we were in Ichiwe, which is a longleaf pine forest, and they were doing a bunch of burning there, and we wanted to get high dynamic range. So you can see that there is a lot of dynamic range in these shots, like right here, the sky is still kind of a gray blue. Uh, there's nothing that's super black. Everything is kind of in between. Now we want that, but we also want to have the ability to do a little bit of a grade on it. Now just for reference, this is actually the grade that I end up putting on it. I like the way that looks because when we were out there, everything was red, hot, smoky. And let me show you how you might achieve that. Now the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're working right up here in the color Tab. Color will allow you to work with the Lumetri color right here on the side. It looks very similar to Adobe Lightroom. So if you're familiar with Lightroom, then this is perfect for you. And this is a huge reason that I use Adobe Premiere is that working with color is so much easier. The point of this though is not to show you how to color grade. It's just to show you how to save your preset. So let me do a quick grade. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. That's kind of nice. It adds a little bit of warmth to it because it was nice and hot. It added a little bit of reds to the highlights add a little bit of blues to the shadows. I like that look in general. Anyway, so say I wanna save this as, uh, essentially as a preset that I can use later. Well, what you would do is you'd create a LUT out of that. So if you go up here to Lumetri Color, they have this little three tab thing. If you click on it, then you, what you wanna do is you can either export that LUT as a .cube file or a .look file. Um, I like to just save it as a .cube file. And what I'll do is, this is my 52 things LUTs files. We'll call this Big Fire and save it. Okay, now I have that Lightroom preset saved. Now, if I wanted to apply that to other clips, let's say I wanna apply it to this one, for instance, then what I can do is I can go here to uh, either my creative tab, where you can put a look on it, or the basic color correction and import a LUT on either one of those. I like to do it in creative because then you can change the intensity. So let's go to the look. Let's uh, go and browse and find Big Fire. Click, open that up. So there you go. That gives us something to start with. Of course, you'll notice in this particular shot, uh, the shadows are really kind of uh, too dark. And so I probably go up to the basic color correction, add a little bit of color back into the shadows, but other than that, I think it's looking pretty good. It allows me to start somewhere. I can do the exact same thing on the next one. Creative, uh, we'll go to browse, big fire. Now the other thing to remember is you can change the intensity here of the LUT. So say I didn't want it to be quite, quite that much. That was a little bit intense. Let's just add it a little bit in there. And then we'll have to do a little bit of basic color correction. Maybe we need the exposure up, maybe the shadows up a little bit as well. But that gives us something to start with, at least as we're going through this footage. 
So that's a very simple way that you would load either your LUT or somebody else's LUT into a particular clip. Now, say you want it in your preset. So in Creative here, under Looks, say you wanted to have one of your own in there. Well, it's really easy. All you do is you go to Finder, you go to your Applications, you click on Adobe Premiere, right click on it, say Show Package Contents, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down uh, to Lumetri, and you're gonna go click on LUTs. Then you're gonna click Creative, and anytime you have a LUT, you can drop into this folder, it will show up in Adobe Premiere. So let me navigate to my other one. There's Big Fire that we just created. Let's copy it, and we'll paste it in here. And just as easy as that, Big Fire is now added to Creative. Of course, what we have to do is we have to go to Adobe Premiere, we have to shut it down and restart it. Okay, now that we've restarted it, we can go over here to the Creative tab in Lumetri in the color, and we can see Big Fire. And you can actually browse through just like this. That's what Big Fire will look like. That's what some of these other presets that come with Adobe Premiere will look like. So just, you can kind of click this button and scroll through, and it's just a quick look as to what it might look like. But I already know I want Big Fire, so I'll click on that. Adds the preset, easy peasy. Super easy. There's how it works all in Adobe Premiere. Now let me show you how you might do it in Photoshop. It's very simple and I'm just gonna skim through this as quick as I can. All right, first things first, you're gonna want a picture to go with. So if you click right here, export frame, this will give you a screen grab of what you're looking at. Click okay. Now let's open that up in Adobe Photoshop. Now if you're used to doing things in Photoshop, all you do is you go through and change everything that you might normally do. Let me do that real quick. If you notice, what I'm doing is I'm adding a lot of adjustment layers. That's how I like to work with things in Adobe Photoshop. You can add mask, do whatever you need to it. And then what you'll do is you'll select all of them, just like this, add them into a group, and then you'll go up here to File, Export, color lookup tables. And I'm just gonna call it forest wide. And I like to go high with my grid points. And I'm going with a .cube file because that works well with Adobe Premiere. There are three other ones that you can use if you know your program uses those as well. And so then you just sit OK, saves it for you. And if we go back to Adobe Premiere, I've actually just loaded it in the presets. This is Forest Fire Wide. So there you go, super simple. It's just you need to know what buttons to push. Now I'm going to show you one last one just as a kind of quickie. This is in 3D LUT Creator. I'm going to probably do a whole video on this because it's kind of complicated. But what you'll notice is that in this web, it's showing saturation. It's showing me that I have some unsaturated blues, but I have some very saturated oranges and that would be the fire right here so i can take all of this if i wanted to like say select all of these reds i could easily take all the fire and turn the fire blue for instance i don't know why i would want to do that but just for fun let's just say that's what i want to do it's something that's very difficult to do in other programs and then i would say save lut to photoshop it's going to throw that lut right into photoshop and that way I could work with the LUT in Photoshop because oftentimes I'm manipulating photos there. Or if I go back, I can actually save that 3D LUT as blue fire. Now let's see what happens when I add that LUT in Adobe Premiere. Pretty cool, just like that. Super easy to change just isolated colors. Whew, I feel like I sped through that so fast. Now if you wanna take one of ours, see if you can work with it in Adobe Premiere. Um, I'm leaving links down here in which you can download a few LUTs, try them out in Adobe Premiere, maybe speed up your workflow a little bit. Oh, and a big announcement, if you haven't read about it already, we're gonna do a quick basics of documentary filmmaking course that's gonna be put out here over the next month or so. Um, Jonas and I have already been shooting some of those. We're excited to get it out. Um, and that's all because of our patrons who have been supporting the work that we're doing. By the way, if you're a patron, you actually have links to all of this for free. That's kind of one of the perks that we're doing. A big, big thanks to you guys. That's kind of uh, one way that we give back occasionally. Awesome. Well, I'm excited for next Tuesday. We'll see you then. Oh yeah! When I, I do these tutorials at night and I just, I grab a glass of wine and I start just clicking through things. Isn't that weird?